this lesson, we are going to discuss about the instantaneous center of zero velocity. In the previous lesson for general plane motion, if we want to calculate the velocity of point B, we need to have a reference point. So in this case, if we choose point A as reference point, then we can draw a position vector of RB slash A. And the equation to calculate the velocity of point B becomes VB equals to VA plus omega cross RB slash A. Now we need to know what is the velocity of point A in order for us to calculate the velocity of point B. If we can find at any instant during the motion that VA or the velocity of point A is equal to zero, then we can reduce the equation to become VB equals to omega cross RB slash A. This is exactly identical to the equation for the case of rotation about a fixed axis, whereas in this case, we are talking about general plane motion. So, if at any instant, VA is equal to zero, then VB should be pointing this way, which is tangent to the path of point B because we can assume that at this moment, point B is rotating about point A. And the same can be done for if we have any other points on the rigid body, let's say we have point C, so we can have a position vector of RC slash A and we can draw VC that is tangent to the path of point C. And if we have another point, point D, uh, we can also do the same, uh, that is VD is equal to omega cross RD slash A. And you see that each of this point is somehow looks like it is rotating about point A, as if at this moment, the rigid body is making a pure rotation about point A. Now, in this particular case, at this particular moment, point A is called the instantaneous center of zero velocity because VA, the velocity of point A is zero, so this is called instantaneous center of zero velocity or also known as IC. Why it is called instantaneous? because the zero velocity only occurs at that particular instant. When the rigid body has moved to other position, the location of IC might have changed. It is not every time, it only occurs at that particular moment only. So how do we identify the location of IC? There are a few methods. The first one is when we have two points on the rigid body undergoing general plane motion, these two points have velocity direction that are not parallel to each other. So in this case, what we need to do is we draw a perpendicular line to the velocity direction of point A. We draw another perpendicular line to the velocity of point B and the intersection point between these two perpendicular lines is the location of IC. This is the first case where the velocity directions of the two points are not parallel to each other. The second case is where the velocity directions are parallel to each other in the same direction. So what we can do here is we draw a perpendicular line to uh, the velocity vectors and we draw another line from the tip of the arrow of velocity of point B, passing through the tip of arrow of velocity of point A, and the intersection point between these two lines is the location of IC. <coughs> and please note that the location of IC does not have to be on the rigid body. The location of IC can be outside of the rigid body. And uh, when we know the location of IC, we can then uh, draw the position vector of RA slash IC because now IC is the reference point 
and then we can also draw the same for RB so it becomes RB slash IC. The third uh, case is where the velocity directions are parallel to each other but in the opposite direction. So in this case we do the same, we draw a perpendicular line to these two velocity vectors and we draw another line from one tip of the arrow to another tip of the arrow and the intersection point is the location of IC. So when we know the location of IC, we can then write the equation of V equals to omega R or in this case, we can rearrange it to become VA slash IC divided by RA slash IC is equal to omega or the same we can do for VB slash IC divided by RB slash IC equal to omega and the calculation using IC method will produce the value in scala. Let's take a look at an example calculation. So now let's say we want to calculate the uh, velocity of point C. So first of all, we have two rigid bodies here. Rigid body AB is experiencing rotation about a fixed axis at point A. This is the center of rotation at point A. And the rigid body BC is undergoing a general plane motion. If we can draw the position vector first, so from point A pointing to point B, this would be RB slash A. The velocity of point B must be pointing this way, which is um, tangent to the path of point B. So that is VB. So what we can do here is that we can calculate the velocity of point B first. So say RB slash A is now equal to um, 0 0.2 cos 45 degrees plus 0 0.2 sine 45 degrees. So RB slash A is 0 0.1414 I. This should be I here and this should be J over here plus 0 0.1414 j in meter so this is rb slash a now we want to calculate the velocity of point b so vb vb is equal to omega ab cross rb slash a so here we get 6k which is positive because it is rotating in counterclockwise direction cross 0 0.1414 i plus 0 0.1414 j so we get here ijk like this so here we have k cross i is positive j so times 6 we get 0 0.8485 so here is 0 0.8485 j and k cross j is minus i so we get minus 0 0.8485 i in meter per second so this is the velocity of point b now we want to calculate the velocity of point C. Uh, by observation, we can determine that the velocity of point B should be pointing in this direction. So this should be VC. So in order for us to calculate VC, we know that uh, the arm BC is experiencing general plane motion. So we need to set point B as the reference point. So now we have VC is equal to VB plus omega BC which is unknown cross RC slash B. Now before we proceed we need to know what is RC slash B. 
so we can go up here to calculate rc slash b that is equal to 0 0.5 um, cos 30 degrees i and then minus 0 0.5 sine 30 degrees j so this is rc slash b so from here we get 0.433i minus 0.25j. So now we have, we know the value of rc slash b. Now we can calculate the velocity of point c. bc is then equal to vb plus omega bc which is unknown cross rc slash b so vc is pointing to the left so we can write this as minus vci is equal to 0 0.8484 j minus 0 0.8484 i plus Omega BCK cross 0 0.433i minus 0.25j. So this part here will be uh, K cross I is positive J, so 0 0.433 omega b c j and then k cross j is minus i so plus 0 0.25 omega b c i okay so then we can we can separate this into components we can write the i component here first so we have minus vc then we can bring the uh, omega bci to the left hand side this will become minus 0 0.25 omega bc equal to uh, z minus 0 0.8484 that's for i and for j component we have zero on this side on on vc there is no j component of vc we can bring 0.433 omega bcj to the left hand side and this will become minus 0 0.433 omega bc that is equal to 0 0.8484 so from here we get omega bc that is equal to this is minus 1.959 rad per second which means that this is um, actually in counterclockwise uh, sorry in clockwise direction so minus for counterclockwise direction we can rewrite this as um, we can rewrite this as 1.959 rad per second in clockwise direction so either way you can write it and for vc it is therefore equal to uh, 1.338 meter per second pointing to the left because initially we have already defined that this is pointing to the left and that is why it is positive because we have defined it earlier if we do not define the direction then we will get negative here so this is the answer uh, solving the problem using the method that we have learned in the previous lesson so how can we solve this uh, if we use the instantaneous center method so how can we determine the location of ic from this from this figure here if we can determine the location of ic let's see how we can solve it so 
Remember that uh, to find the location of IC, we need to draw a perpendicular line. So we draw a perpendicular line to VC like this, and then we draw a perpendicular line to this point. So basically, the intersection line here, this here should be the location of IC. This should be the location of IC. Okay. So since here is 30 degrees, then we know here is 60 degrees. So over here is RB slash IC. RB from IC. Okay. And here we have RC slash IC. So here is actually uh, 30 degrees. And here is 45 degrees. So in total, it is 75 degrees over here. So we can um, then use sign rule. So if here is 75, here is 60. Definitely over here, it will be 45 degrees. So we can use sign rule. Uh, 0 0.5 divided by sine of 45 degrees is equal to um, RB slash IC over sine of 60 degrees which is also equal to RC slash IC equal to uh, sine of 75 degrees therefore from here we can get the value of rb slash ic to be equal to 0.6124 meter and rc slash ic is then equal to 0.683 so here we have 0.683 meter so now we know that point IC it has zero velocity. This point has zero velocity. So we can then find um, omega BC that is equal to BB divided by R RB slash IC. So we have here omega AB times RB slash A divided by rb slash ic so we get uh, omega ab is 6 times uh, 0 0.2 divided by rb slash ic is 0 0.6124 which is equal to 1.959 so we have here 1.959 uh, rad per second this is exactly the same as what we have determined in here so you notice that the step is significantly uh, less than the normal calculation so if we are able to find the location of ic then we can reduce the time uh, cons consumed to calculate the uh, to solve the problem. So we get omega BC equals to 1.959 and therefore we can use uh, another relationship. Therefore we can use uh, omega BC that is equal to um, VC divided by uh, RC slash IC. So from here we can get the value of VC. So I'm going to continue down here. So we get um, VC that is equal to 1.959 times uh, RC slash IC which is 0 0.683. So in this case we will get 1.9 VC as is equal to 1.338 meter per second that is exactly equal to what we have in here using our 
our uh, normal calculation. So this is just an alternative method for you to calculate the the velocity uh, and angular velocity of a rigid body undergoing general plane motion if you are able to find the location of IC.